Welcome to Creation in the 21st Century. I'm your host, Carl Ball, founder and director of the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose, Texas. You must call every friend you have to watch the program today. I'm very serious about that. You need to call every friend you have, but listen at the same time. We have today a cryptozoologist as my special guest. He has traveled the world over. What is a cryptozoologist? That's someone who examines reports of creatures and entities that supposedly have been extinct for a long period of time, and someone who solves mysteries that previously had a different interpretation. A man with insight and determination, and that describes our guest today. Now, Dr. Dennis Swift has been a friend of mine for a number of years, has been an emissary of the Creation Evidence Museum in making special arrangements with museums and other parts of the world for acquisition of priceless treasures all through the proper legal channels. And there is always a channel through which these things need to be done appropriately. This man is rare. You have to see what he brought to the platform and to your life today. Dr. Swift, Dennis, it's a joy to have you. You and I have talked about this for a couple of years. Yes. But you were normally traveling somewhere off in Afghanistan or Peru or looking through some of the mines or caves in other parts of the world and all at the same time making a living. How do you make a living doing all of that? Well, I also pastor a church. Oh, okay. Uh, that Church of All Nations in Beaverton, Oregon, yes. Well, uh, this man is not only a theologian, he's a Ph.D. in an academic field as well. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of friends, and each has characteristics. You have determination to find the truth about an issue. You also never forget where you've been. You and I have been down some trails, and rather than have to glance at a map, you know exactly where to turn, what fence to cross, what rock was there 20 years ago when you saw the place before. God's given you a special gift there. You know the Lord, don't you? Yes, very much. That's one reason you're determined yes. to solve many of these mysteries. Yes. We have so much to talk about today that uh, we can't just pass the time. We must get serious about this. Back in the 1950s, Eric Von Daniken published a book, a little later than the 50s, uh, 60s, 70s. Eric Von Daniken published a book, Chariot of the Gods. He made certain claims. That became a bestseller and determined the mindset of a generation. But Dr. Dennis Swift wanted to find what the real facts were about the Nazca lines. Now, we have three great Indian tribes of the past that inhabited the Peruvian plains. Nazcas, Incas, and Tiwanakas, correct? Uh, and also the Vicas and the uh, Paracas Indians in the same geographical region. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they practiced certain things for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to learn today some of this first time exposed to the public. So, let's begin over here with uh, the Nazca Lions. These have made history and have been very famous. What do we have in the Nazca uh, Lions? The Nazca Lions uh, is the world's largest uh, scratch pad. It, the earth skin is used as a canvas of art. It's a big doodling pad. But what we have here on the Nazca Plains in a desert region of 800 square miles, and roughly these figures and lines cover 135 miles by about 25 miles. What we have is over 13,000 lines like this. We have over 700 trapezoids and over 80 large animals and humans on colossal dimensions. In fact, By these, colossal how, uh, how big? Well, the largest is over 800 feet long. Mm. Right? These can only be seen from the air. Uh, and they're a mystery, an unexplained mystery for the most part. Uh, you know, the origin of civilization. A lot of people want to say, well, man was not the beginning. There had to be aliens who came down. This is Eric Von Doniken yes. when he wrote Chariots of the Gods. And also, he sold more than 60 million books. And he takes, for instance, uh, the lines and says that they were aerial uh, spaceport runways for uh, landing uh, uh, ET uh, extraterrestrials. But if you look closely here, 
you'll see this is one that's uh, over six miles in length, 2,500 feet across, and it's laser straight. So Incredible. absolutely laser straight. I do not know if we have a combination of technological equipment that could duplicate these lines today. Now, how, not, how deep is now, this? Now, this is very soft earth, so a spacecraft, uh, spacecraft could not have landed here. All right. But also, the way they laid it out and so forth, we're, it's a mystery to us. But, you know, what a lot of, there's a lot of chronological snobbery. That is that evolutionists would see that ancient man is a bunch of mental morons, while Contemporary man is a bionic brain species, and it's really uh, it's just reverse. the opposite. Uh, the, it wasn't where well, the fall of man was downward, not upward. That's it's right. not the ascent of man; it's the decline of man. And so, ancient man is portrayed as a is a beetle browed barrel chested, bow legged brute with bulging biceps, peanut brain, drooling, savage, knuckle dragging, and uh, wasn't technologically advanced. So therefore, you can either go to the theory that aliens came down, or you can give man his rightful place in history. Yes. These, these were laid out by the Nazca Indians, and precise. Now over here, we have one of the colossal figures. This is a spider. Uh, this spider is 150 feet long. It's one continuous line of more than a half mile. What's incredible and astonishing about this spider... Now you need to hear this, audience. Uh, are you awake? You need to get this information in the next minute. Okay, Dr. Swift? This is a rare species of spider, the Rachinelia, from the Amazon, more than a thousand miles away. It's only about an eighth of an inch long, barely detectable to the human eye. But during reproduction, its third leg becomes a protuscable tube that expands, and on the end is the reproductive organ. This can only be seen under a high-powered microscope. Say that again uh, for the sake of the audience. This can only be seen under a high-powered microscope. So they had to have had some kind of technology. Now, Marilyn Charles Denny has proven conclusively that there was evidence that they used lenses and other mirrors and so forth to build telescopes to, to look into the constellations and the stars. Now, remember this point because in a few moments before this program is over, you're going to observe some rocks taken from the tombs. And you're going to see procedures that are par paralleled only by our very best medical procedures of this day. I told you, you needed to call a friend to watch this program. So, Dr. Swift, you're saying that in order for them to represent this on a colossal scale, but to represent it at all, they had to have precision instruments, optical instruments, uh, magnifying lens to say to the see least. It. Yes, it only can be seen, seen with a high-powered microscope. And not only that, to lay it out in such detail on the ground where it can only be seen from the air. Marvelous. How could they do that? Now they uh, have additional this, this is the first time this is going to be seen publicly. This was officially excavated in 1959 in Nazca. It is a piece of vicus pottery that has been authenticated by the Dumbarton Oaks, Oaks Museum, Washington, D.C., many other foremost pre-Columbian museums in America. There's no question that this is vicus. It's 100 to 400 A.D. What mystifies the authorities is this. Why does it look like a steamroller? And this and, is the rear and, angle and, of yes, the same. Uh, and it has wheels. It has wheels. And they had knowledge of it more than 1,500 years before the Industrial Revolution. Marvelous. But inside on this, if you'd hold this again, upwards, you'll see not only the wheels, but on the inside there's a man inside here, at a, 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 like a wheel and a control panel. And if you look at the back, it's like tires. This is truly from 100 to 400 A.D. Marvelous technology. Now, Dr. Swift, for this audience, for the first time ever, is going to solve a great mystery at this moment, right now. Dennis? Yes, I, I received an archaeological permit by the, per, per, the Peruvian government in April of this year, and I uh, did some excavations and some aerial photography of the Nazca lines. This was identified by Eric von Donegan as an astronaut, and it's known around the world as the astronaut that this is an alien. And Von, Do Von Donneken sold over 60 million books 